Hello guys, I am so back in YouTube. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So our topic for today is making the statement of the problem for descriptive, causal comparative, and correlational research. So these are the three types of quantitative research that students usually do, lalo na sa mga non-experimental researchers. Okay, so for the descriptive research, okay, I will give you an example. When you say descriptive research, you are describing the characteristics or how the phenomenon act. Okay, so, so yung title niyan is Child Disciplining Practices of Parents of Senior High School Students on Building a Positive Parent-Child Relationship. So, ito yung example ng descriptive research. So, based on the general idea or the objective, this study aims to describe the child disciplining practices of parents of senior high school students in building a positive parent-child relationship. So, ang goal niyan is describe lang yung child disciplining practices. So, ang technique ko dyan on how to formulate the questions from general to specific. So, mag-isip ka muna anong general idea mo based sa title mo. So, ang general idea dyan ay positive parent-child relationship. Yun yung pinaka-problem mo eh. So, yung first question mo dyan sa SOP what are the levels of knowledge of the respondents towards a parent-child relationship? Bakit siya una? Kasi siya yung pinaka-general. Siya yung pinaka-problema. Or shall I say main topic. Okay. So I'm going to narrow it down. So what are the ways on building a parent-child relationship as perceived by the respondent? So medyo nag-specific na tayo. So, building a positive parental relationship. So, we're focusing on the ways. So, tiyatanong lang natin yung general ways mismo. So, now, we're going to specific, to a more specific na tayo. Do na tayo sa mas specific. So, specify na natin yung ways. So, yung third question is, what are the child disciplining practices of parents in building a positive parent-child relationship as perceived by the respondents? So, ibig sabihin nun, Yung, yung child disciplining practices, yun yung nagsispecify ng ways on building a positive parent-child relationship. So, you are describing the ways through categorizing it as child disciplining practices. Tapos sa last sentence mo, or shall I say last question mo, what is the importance of child disciplining practices of parents in building a parent, a positive parent-child relationship as perceived by the respondent. So, yung importance ang i-describe mo sa huli. Kasi when you're going to make a descriptive research, very important yun, yung parang addressing the importance. You're going to mention the importance kasi as you, as researchers say, we need to make research helpful sa society natin. Okay, so going back to the title, so, kina-highlight ko yung mga keywords para mas may, mabilis maintindihan yung mga researchers sa paggawa ng research at sa paggawa ng objectives and research questions. So, bali from general to specific tayo. So, another example of a descriptive research. Safety measures of grade 12 students in dealing with fire hazards. So, this study aims to evaluate the safety measures of grade 12 students dealing with with fire hazard. So, yung first question ay fire hazard. So, what are the levels of knowledge of the respondents towards fire hazards? Pag sinabing fire hazards, yun yung general topic natin. Yun yung main issue natin. Then, pangalawa, doon na tayo sa mas specific ng konti, pero medyo malawak pa rin. So, ways on dealing with fire hazard as perceived by the respondent. So, bakit ways? Kasi hindi pa naman natin isi-specify. So, you just want to know what are the ways lang na. So, bakit as perceived by the respondents? Kasi, ang mga respondents minsan, hindi, ni, hindi nila alam ano yung fire hazard. So, gusto lang natin alamin kung ano yung pagkakaalam nila. Okay. So, these questions are for the students. Okay. So, what are the safety measures on dealing with fire hazards as perceived by the respondents? Yung yung third question. So, nasa specify natin yung ways. So, in this na ways, nagiging safety measures na tayo. We're describing ways as safety measures. So, we're describing the topic from general to specific nga. Then, the lastly, what is the importance of the safety measures on dealing with fire hazards as perceived by the respondents? 
kasi sa sinisingit ko tong importance as the last question to give the benefit to give the significance para mag para makatulong siya sa lipunan natin eh. because when we make research questions we need to make sure that it is helpful to our society so para sa ning research para makasolve tayo ng problem yung kinaharap natin okay so when we say causal comparative research it is the cause and effect relationship between the two variables. So, hindi lang siya basa-basa kinocompare, kundi dinidetermine ano yung cause and effect relationship. So, if then, so, si Sanhi at Bunga, I'll give an example of the title. Workload and its impacts and on burnout among mathematical researchers. Just to give you an idea, mathematical researchers, trabaho din yan. Pinabayaran din sila. So, ang main goal niyan is to determine the cause and effect relationship between workload and burnout among mathematical researchers. Pag sinabing workload, ano yung mga ginagawa mo sa work? Ano, pag sinabing burnout, yung parang exhaustion, pagod. Okay, so the first question is, what are the workloads encountered by mathematical researchers? Si workload ay si independent variable, siya yung cause. Then the second is, what are the levels of burnout of the mathematical researchers? So, yung burnout na yun, yun ang ibig sabihin, yun yung effect, yun yung effect ng workload. So, pag sinabing impacts, effects rin yan. Okay, so the third question is, what is the significant difference between workload and burnout among mathematical researchers? Sa causal comparative, ang huli mong question is, what is the significant difference? So, yun yung itatanong mo sa huli. Okay. Going back, pag sinabing levels of knowledge, levels of awareness din yan. Pag sinabing, when we say correlational research, okay. So the keywords are animal cruelty and violence against women. So the title is Correlational Analysis of Animal Cruelty and Violence Against Women. So the general idea is the study aims to correlate the animal cruelty and violence against women. So, we're going to determine the correlation. So, when we correlate the two variables, we need to make sure that both have similarities. Why animal cruelty and violence against women are both that they have similarities? Because when we say cruelty, it's form of maltreatment. It could be violence. It could be bullying. While violence against women, naman, it could be physical assault. It could be cruelty. So, both, and another thing, both are offensive acts. So, dun pa lang similarities na. They have many similarities kasi. So, the first question is, what are the levels of awareness of the respondents towards animal cruelty? Second, what are the levels of awareness of the respondents towards violence against women? Then next, the last question is, what is the significant relationship between animal cruelty and violence against women? So, let me give you an advice. So, the keywords of your research title can help you in making the statement of the problem. So, huwag kayo matakot sa paggawa ng research questions. So, I hope that this can help you in making the statement of the problem for descriptive, causal comparative, and correlation research. So, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. So, keep subscribing, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you, God bless, and have a great day.